So we are joined by uh, All Whites interim head coach Darren Baisley, uh, ahead of our games against Charles, <coughs> following him and acting the 26 person, stop, 26, 24 person squad uh, for the games um, uh, this morning. Um, so, uh, Darren, how does it feel to actually name your first squad? To, um, uh, for the team? I mean, it was good. It was. Uh, it's an exciting squad. Um, a strong squad, and we're excited to to get together. I can't can't wait to catch up with all the boys again. I know there there's already a lot of talk between them uh, about being excited to come back to New Zealand and, and to reconnect with everybody. So yeah, so we're happy with the squad. It's very exciting. Cool. Over to you guys. Darren, now we've been around this team for a while. It's literally been your job to, to give the fuck good news, fun quotes, fire some of the bad news, fun quotes again. I was it like telling Cal- 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 that he was in a all white squad for the first time. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the good part of the job, telling people that they're in, especially somebody for the first time. Um, I've got good relationships with pretty much all the players in the, in the wider squad. Um, I've known them all for a long time and, and had you know, previous working relationships with them. So even before I was made into him, I was still connecting with most of them through my role as assistant, but also through previous roles. And uh, Callan's one with... You know, I keep in touch with uh, and constantly message him through the season. He's had a good season. So that was a really nice phone call. Um, I've, I've spoke to everybody or, or most people in the wider squad. Um, and obviously there was some disappointed people that haven't made this squad. You know, we've now got players that are playing around the world in professional environments that haven't made this squad. Um, so that's that's good for New Zealand. Just thought two others who are back after Quite a while away is Alex Rude for a Max Mother. I think last time you Alex as the coach, he was playing as a striker. Nah. <laughs> and yeah, what was it like to sort of give him that call, especially after his recent injury? Where... Yeah, Alex is a great lad. Uh, obviously, known him a long time. Um, he had the setback you know, with his injury, which was tough for him. But I felt like watching, as I do watch the Phoenix, you know, he's come back from that injury and performed really well. And, and I actually think he's progressing his game, developing his game. He's he's starting to look. Um, more positive in possession. You know, he obviously got his goal, which was great for him. Uh, but he's starting to affect the game really positively. So, um, you know, we we looked at previous squads and previous selections, current form, availability. You know, uh, positionally as well. And it was, you know, it was the right time for Alex to come back into the squad. Darren, just on your role in this team, last time we spoke, uh, you you were given the job, but you're in uh, as an interim. As your name back in the hat, if you had any, you know, conversations about, you know, potentially becoming the white team coach? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to think that I was always in the hat because, you know, we went through the process with New Zealand football, um, through the interview process. Um, right now, we're just concentrating on this window. Um, you know, we, I can't wait to get the boys back together. Um, you know, it's my job now is to make sure that the environment within the camp is as good as it can be and that we put on a couple of good performances against China, and we'll, and we'll see what happens after that. Are you still considered, though, to, you know, as your name, back in the head? Yeah, because you told me last time that you didn't get it. Did you take it out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, is it, you know, for you, is there, yeah. is there another chance, you know, another chance that you could... Well, I, I've never I've never felt that I was out of the equation. Um, I've never been told I was. You know, I've, I've been kept informed of the process all the way along. Uh, Andrew News and Football, you know, told me that there was a preferred candidate that they were speaking to. That's fine, and he's always said, um, "We'll just go through that process and keep talking." I, I'm fortunate enough, I feel, and and proud enough to be given the opportunity to to be in the shoes. So I, I suppose I've got a great opportunity to put my best foot forward in how this camp and these performances go. Uh, and like I say, we're we're really just concentrating on that now. Haven't looked too far ahead. Um, and we'll no doubt there'll be conversations after the tour. And your assistants around you that were named uh, yesterday, can you yep. just sort of uh, explain the thinking of why you've brought those guys in and, and what but they will add to this group? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's really exciting to have those three, especially as ex All Whites and as ex World Cup players coming back into the squad. Um, the the window is such a short window. It's so you do look at uh, we need quality coaches. Uh, but we need quality people and we need people that can add to the environment. Uh, and I know that those three will add to the environment and add to the the whole process of being an all white and, and um, help. We've, we've got a very young squad. So I think having someone like Simon, especially, that has done so much you know, within the all white environment, be able to give and impart his 
experience and his knowledge of not just football but playing for the always i think that's going to be massive and just find it for me um on sub treat he's been out for a while this environment but he's still uh recovering but hopefully be back in june how is he going and um the, the realistic chance of him being there in june is he tracking the right way that that you know yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I constantly keep in touch with Sarpri. It's it's great to see him back playing. Um, this window is probably too early for him uh, in regards to the injury that he's had and that he's been you know, looking after. It's one of those injuries that, it, you know, could flare up. So he's very conscious of that. And, he, you know, he really needs to get his club career moving in the right direction, which it, which it's starting to again. Um, he was... He was like not upset, but he was he just wanted people to know that he wants to play for New Zealand and um, timing not quite right for this window with the the travel and the short window. So yeah, I mean he um, definitely made it clear that he wanted to play for the OS this year. Darren, how do you feel um, sitting at the top table? But I guess there's still uncertainty about what happens beyond March. Uh, I'm enjoying it. You know, it's uh, I'm very privileged. It's you know, it's a great position to be in, um, whether there's uncertainty or not. Um, I'm I'm enjoying it. You know, it's 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 something that I've done for a long time. It's um, it's not a new position, as in working with your wife, preparing for a tour, preparing for a window, preparing for games with this group of players. So it's something we've been doing for the last sort of eight, ten years. So. Yes, it is slightly different to being in this position now, but uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it, and I don't necessarily feel the pressure of it's an interim role. You know, let's 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 do the job we can while we're in it. Yeah, I guess on that note, New Zealand football said they'll be looking at what happens in March, the mm. environment, the the performances. Uh, what can you do to do you think to state your case? Yeah, in this in this window. Well, I, I mean, I think I can be myself. Um, like I've said, it's the, the, the window and when all whites come together, it's not about me. It's about the players. It's about making sure that the environment is the right environment for them um, and that they're organised and it's professional and that we, you know, all the players, when they go on the pitch, know their roles and responsibilities, uh, which is great that we can have some continuity because um, we are quite a long way like, down the track with a lot of those things with this group of players. So it's good that within the staff and everything, there's, there is quite a bit of continuity with a few new faces, a few new uh, opinions as well to add to that. Um, I think it's something that we've been gradually growing over the last two years, every time we've got together, uh, and we'll continue to do that. We need to continue to develop the, the playing style uh, and the environment for the players. But yeah, so my job's the easy job, the players have to go and play. So. And with Simon and Glenn, how long have you been talking to them about potential potential roles um i mean I, I i do speak to them pretty regularly it's uh i suppose it's quite recent that i've talked to them about roles because it's not been my position um they're two good people that have connections to new zealand obviously and i think it was only a matter of time before both of them were involved uh, I, was, I was lucky enough to be able to be the one that's brought them into the environment and uh, i think they're going to add great value for us yeah, with Simon particularly, what do you think he'll he'll bring? What are his qualities from your point of view? Yeah, I think experience. Um, I'm I'm really looking forward to hearing his opinion on on everything and and just on, mainly mainly on game day, the the insights that he can bring on what's happening in that game right there. You know when it's all fast and everything's going on, and I need somebody to be able to give some uh, opinion and some experienced knowledge of how we can affect the performance within the game. I think he can be of real great value, as well as him helping assist, put together the environment for the players. Darren, how different do you think your style of coaching is, and I guess your style of play is what we have seen the last couple of years under Danny? I mean, as I was part of that group, it, it won't be dr wouldn't be drastically different in regards to style of play because I've been part of that process of helping put those performances together. And I think, you, you, as you've seen over the last two years, there has been a lot of positive performances. The style of play has been pretty good and it has developed from the last five years ago to, to how it has been this year. Obviously, the results have, have not, in the past six months, not gone the way we wanted with regards to Costa Rica uh, and those Australia games. But I think across the board, it's, it's, uh, it's been pretty positive and Definitely performances have been tracking in the right direction towards a certain style of play. 
our job now is to take those performances and turn them into consistent results against big teams. Is it tricky for you coming into, I imagine it would been weird going into a job being like, you've got this job for a couple of weeks and then you don't know what's happening after that because you probably want to implement your own way of doing things. Like how are you at least approaching this? Uh, probably approaching it by saying, well, we're going to give it a great shot while while we're in this role. Um, I don't look too far ahead right now. You know, we've got a job to do um, and make sure that this is as positive experience as it can be for the players and, and let's put on a couple of great performances um, in these two games. Darren, you've mentioned a couple of times you're not looking too far as you, but it sounds like you've been keeping in touch with Andrew in terms of the process. What's your understanding of where it lies and what the plan is beyond this looking at your this journey. Yeah, I, I mean, he's said in the press, and, and like I'm saying, I don't think there's going to be any discussion about anything until after the window. Um, after that, I suppose they'll they'll have a look at my performance within this window um, and then decide whether to continue discussions with myself or to con continue discussions with other people. You mentioned about Sapri. Um Ryan is in a similar boat. What have your chats with him been like and where is he at? Yeah, Ryan, Ryan's in a good place right now. Um, he's another player that, again, I, I keep in touch with regularly. He's been through quite a bit over the last few years. Uh, different to Sapri, as in he hasn't played for the all Whites for four years. Um, so for him, it's it's a timing thing as well. He's, he's still managing his injuries um, and looking after his body. And right now, during the international windows, he uses those weeks to um, use that to maintain his body so he's not quite ready to to take on extra footballing activities right now but again he he's one that uh, you know he was keen to not roll out playing for the All Whites again and, and I'd like to think at some stage again this year that we'll see Ryan Thomas in an All Whites shirt. You obviously don't give Bill and Ben but yep. give Marco back so does it sort of balance out a little bit that situation having someone like Marco come back and, and the experiences that he's had in the last few months? I think every window this happens, you, you, you lose some, you gain some. Um, th this is the difficulty with the, the international football. You know, um, not everybody around the world stops. So the, the MLS doesn't stop for the window. So it becomes harder for, for those players. Now, Bill's in a different position to a Michael Boxall who's you know, been at a club for a number of years. He's just transferred or traded uh, to Charlotte, uh, which is a big club. Um, and the club between him and the club of us that, you know, during this window, he doesn't, he doesn't leave because they've got games uh, and they're a little bit short in his positional area. And being a new player that they've actually paid quite a bit of money for, and, you know, it's an investment for them. So what they have agreed is that, you know, this, that they'll make him available for future windows. Um, so that's good, good for New Zealand moving forward. Uh, and in this window, it just means that somebody else has an opportunity. Do the likes of uh, Marco and I think Tommy comes back as well. Yeah. You know, having that experience around a reasonably young, young group is important. Yeah. yeah, I think when you look at the squad, we've got a really good blend of some experienced players with, you know, a lot of caps and a lot of age. <laughs> uh, and we've got this whole group of young players that are, that are actually not young really anymore when you look at some of them. Um, it's an exciting group with a good blend, uh, but it is, I suppose when you look at it, the core group is that younger age group. Um, but we've got some good leaders in the, in the older players that really do help those younger players continue to develop. Darren, in terms of some of the tougher calls, would it be fair to say, perhaps those format positions for the ones where, especially Bart is behind Libby, and perhaps on the right with some of the periods where you sort of tough to leave some of the players up? Yeah, like I said before, we have we have left out quite a number of professional footballers out of uh, an white squad, which hasn't always been the case, you know, in the last sort of five, six years within New Zealand football. So, um, yeah, we had some difficult conversations with players. Um, I'm comfortable with what we've got, with the squad we have. Uh, I think it's a good balance across the squad. With, it gives us some flexibility positionally as well with a, f a certain few players. Um, but, yeah, there there is players that, you know, I'm sure would want to be involved of that have missed out. And we've got some players um, like Francis De Vries and Nico Cohen that are still returning from injuries that pretty much weren't available for selection. And just on goalkeepers, um, as I say, I'll sort of clear number one and why Steph, who's sort of, you know, I been training around the yep. point, why have some of the guys who are not playing, we've seen some of those guys. Yeah. Can't crash it. 
yeah, we, we had long conversations with all the, our staff and, and the goalkeeper coaches that we speak to regularly. Um, we all still think that Oli has done really well with us. Um, he's performed really well consistently over a, a good number of years now. And yes, he is the current number one. Stefan's obviously a very good goalkeeper. You know, he's he's gone through some stuff at his club and he's now removed himself from that environment. Um, but again, I'm, I'd you know I'd be wait, I'd be very comfortable with Stefan playing. He's a very good goalkeeper. When we look at bringing in a third goalkeeper, it, it becomes difficult. We have some very good goalkeepers around the world. Um, when you look at Michael Vout in Germany, who's currently not playing at his club, but if you look at Nick Zanev and Max Krokom, both in England consistently playing football at a, at a good level and performing. So to bring players from those environments that don't also stop for the window and takes them out of playing for their clubs to potentially tra travel across the world to then train three times and sit on the bench. So we made a decision to not, not bring those guys in, um, not necessarily based on performance, but based on we're comfortable that Ollie's number one and is going to play. Stefan's going to push Ollie in regards to that number one position and then we'll bring up one of the the benefit we have on this tour is we have the under 23 games and the under 23 squad in the hotels with us uh, they've got three goalkeepers that we're pretty comfortable and excited about so one of those three can always jump in as a third goalkeeper on the bench for each game Clayton Lewis has been in Fabian does he have to play for the Phoenix before the window to come or will you bring him in anyway and the chance he could perhaps make his return with you guys with with Clayton, we've left it quite open. Um, he's a valued, strong member of our squad and has been for a number of years. So um, we'll see how we will monitor him over the next sort of two weeks, um, and then we'll we'll bring him into camp. We'll monitor him in camp. You know, if he's played beforehand, obviously it means he can do a little bit more during the week, and then we'll just see how he is. You know, he's ahead of schedule uh, as he always is with injuries, seems to be. So uh, it's, it's good for us that he's you know, getting close to being available. Um, if we feel like he's fit enough and he's ready and, and we need him, then yeah, I don't see why we wouldn't put him on the pitch. And if he's not fit, is he someone sort of on standby to back up? Or do you feel he's got enough? No, we, we've sort of added to the squad um, to give Clayton that time. Um, obviously, if you look at the squad, we do have other midfielders. So if Clayton's not available, we're, we're comfortable we have enough cover in those positions to um, to deal with that. It touched on the short and uh, because it's a Thursday night game. Um, what's the sort of, can you a sense of, you know, in terms of players being able to train properly? What does it going to look like on that Tuesday or Wednesday? Just sort of, I guess, the, the, the environment for yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll start training on the Monday, but if we look at the players available for Monday, we, we'll be out of probably seven or eight players. So come Tuesday, we, we get most of our players arriving on the Tuesday, um, but some of them arrive in sort of early morning, so they won't be fully able to train on the Tuesday. So Wednesday is really our key session, the day before the game for the first game where we will have everybody with us. But even that day, we'll have had players that have traveled and arrived through the night that day and arrived early morning on the Wednesday. So that makes... That makes it quite difficult, but uh, again, you know, it's something that the players will deal with, we'll deal with. We've got a big enough squad to make sure that, you know, we don't put people in a position where they're not comfortable playing in regards to um, fitness and, uh, and potential injuries. So, yeah, we've, um, it is what it is with international windows, especially in this part of the world where people are traveling and, and losing a day because of the time difference. But so it's something that we'll deal with. No problem, we'll be Kiwi and we'll deal with it. This most important question, um, what be your sign line attire? <laughs> what, what would you like me to wear? <laughs> something, uh, something I haven't really thought about. Um, I, I'm, I, I, yeah, I'll be, I'll be comfortable. I won't be, I won't be in a suit. <laughs> yeah. What do you know about the opposition? I mean, can you do a bit of research on them? Have you done a bit of research on them? Yeah. I mean, yeah. What do you? Know? Yeah. I, I mean, they're they're going to be a good test. They. They haven't played a lot of football in the last year. They had their World Cup qualifiers almost a year ago. Um, and then they have played some games during the year, but it was a, a slightly different squad. So we've got those games and we've watched them. We know their squad and we've got details on the players. They they pretty much well, they all play in China in the, in the league there. Um, what they have got is a lot of time together. You know, they from what we've heard, they've they've already gone into camp. 
Um, and they, they'll pretty much, by the time their players have been together for four weeks in a training camp. So they'll be organized. Uh, they're going to be a stern test for us. You know, obviously the rankings are higher than us, but I, I don't read too much into the rankings. I feel like we should be a lot higher than our current ranking. Um, yeah, it'll be a good test for us. And a little bit unknown because they haven't played so much football. Um, but yeah, we'll be, we'll be ready for how we think they're going to play and how we think their strengths and weaknesses are. On from similar to what Andrew said, this occasion for you, um, yeah, it will be interim, but you, you're still the head coach. I mean, the emotions, the feelings, the nerves, uh, I know it's still a wee way out, but I mean, what's it like for you? Yeah, I, I mean, it's proud. I'm, I'm very proud and I'm privileged to be in this position. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be involved within this type of football for a number of years in, in regards to all whites games. Um, so it's, yeah, I'm excited by it. I, I'm not stressing about it and you know i'm not feeling tense about it i'm looking to enjoy it and 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 i feel like that's not it's not going to be easy for sure but i know all the players we know what it's like being in camp together uh they know me so i don't think there's too many unknowns coming into this camp which is nice for me as a coach just on uh, marco what have you thought of him since he's been at, at call goal yeah I, I mean he's been in and out of the team uh, but that's a big club and a, and a big league, you know. So I've always loved Marco. He's a great little player. Um, and we potentially haven't seen enough of him uh, within the All Whites environment over a number of years. And, you know, he's had patches where he's performed to such a high level here in the A-League or when he's been away uh, into different leagues. So, yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see what he's like having spent time over in Chile. Um, and see if you know he, he, he's developed even more um, from when we last saw him. You know, when you speak to him, he, he's loving life. He's really enjoying the club and the challenges over there. Uh, I think it is very different to to the A League what, what he's in. So I think it would be awesome him coming back in. And he's such a good person. You know, he comes in and he helps the young players and you know imparts his his knowledge and his experience with those players. And he's such a really helpful player within the squad he's a great team man but we like i think we all want to see him produce on the pitch so uh, yeah hopefully we'll see marco um at his best in in some of these games because high pressure league isn't it over there and so yeah. he's sort of stepped out of his comfort zone in a big way uh, in a big way you know and uh, it's been a massive challenge for him being over there but one that he, he he tells me he's enjoying and loving so hopefully coming back here he'll be able to bring a lot of that stuff to hear and really go and you know perform on this national stage for us for us and just finally um back to that compressed time you've got the schedule any early thoughts on how you use the 24 players across what you've got two games and in, in four days any early thoughts about how you would juggle it yeah i mean yeah we've got some we've got some early thoughts regarding uh when players arrive but the first thing the players will do when they arrive is go and see the physio, go and see the, uh, the SNC guy and, and have a check. We call it the player check-in um, and see how they're feeling and see how their legs are. You know, we'll, we'll pick a, a team to play in the first game, you know, based on who's, you know, the fittest in that moment and who fits the squad. Um, it probably will affect some of the decisions, but, you know, because like I say, we'll have players that are traveling across the world and arrive in the day before that game, which is slightly difficult for them and we'll have also had other players that would have been with us for three days so uh, i mean it could benefit some players uh for that first game uh rather than others yeah darren chris wood obviously a massive leader in this team yep. he was quite outspoken um around the australian games what have your conversations with chris been like leading up to to these fixtures Okay, uh, I'm, 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 my relationship with chris is great i've known chris a long time you know and we've talked regularly over the last 10 years um so he's he's fully supportive you know he he wants the best for new zealand he's proud you know he he you know he's he comes back every game oh, we never we never doubt that chris will turn up you know he he loves playing for the all whites you know and he he wants to break all records and you know no doubt he will so um yeah he's he's excited with the squad you know i've, I've spoke to him a lot about players and and the environment and and how Again, we can make it as good as it can be for the players during this tour. So, um, yeah, he's, he's really important to us and he's in a good place.